Hello, Lucas here, and I'm going to show you my uh, implementation of Round Robin, which was the CA1 for the networking, um, and my HTTP server, which is listening on multiple ports, where Round Robin will be providing uh, load balancing for the ports. So first I'm going to, to show you how the code is running, and then I'm go going to talk about the implementation of the code. So if I start my server, as you can see, this is my HTTP server. Um, now this is because it's multi-threaded, so the thread with ID is on port 2001, uh, 2004, 5. I have a 2000 is my sorting port, and the rest are the HTTP ports where the clients will be uh, connecting and getting resources from. So there is the client which I'm going to connect with. So if I now start my client as well, as you can see this is the client and this is the server. So um, server is running and client is connecting and getting the resources. And uh, when you, when you, why are you, wha why you wondering that why the receive for client is failing, it's because I set up more clients and I shut down the server for the log file. So if I close the clients now and I go to my server, I can see that uh, the next client is going to reconnect on port 2005, uh, the client 6 is on, uh, on port 2005, client port is client IP, what, I what, what web page he is requesting. Um, this is just uh, what what is uh, this is the full HTTP 1.1 get and this is just the file that I extracted from in using rejects and then I'm sending response as a server and how many bytes I sent the file was successfully closed and then the client is connected at uh, the timestamp and the request processing request took 0 0.02 so basically few milliseconds um, and then the client 35 is on for 2000 so he connected on 2000 and then he was again redirected to 2001 and as you can see it then it goes to 2002 so it evenly distributes the clients between the ports each of the ports have a uh, multiple threads so there can be multiple clients connected on it this breaking is that the server just shutting down because I forced that. So now if I close this and I go to my log file and as you can see in the log file it just shows me how many clients I had so I stop after 40 clients um, shows the port of the client, IP, timestamp and how much milliseconds the request took. So as you can see, the the time stop goes from 25 seconds, 26, 27, 30, 31, 32, and uh, the the requests are depending on how big resources were, so they're changing the milliseconds. Um, the IP address is all same for the client because it's just the local host, and the ports are nicely sorted. So one, two, three, four, five. 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 So it's evenly distributing clients between the ports. Um, now, if you're wondering why the printout is uh, nice because uh, it is multi-threaded and printout is nice, I made in my client. I made a delay so there is 100 milliseconds uh, delay between the clients so that the printout in my server server is nice. If I take this millisecond, uh, sorry, 200 milliseconds sleep. So if I take that out, what happens now is that the thread threads will be m interleaving and you will see the printout on the server. So I start my ser I start my server again. Now I go to my client. I start my client and as you can see that the threads are interleaving. Same same for the server. It just every thread is getting access to my printout and it's just printing whatever time slice it has so it just prints like one one line then another thread then another thread so it is multi-threaded um, 
I put that back as it was. So the printouts are, are nice. Uh, I think that 100 milliseconds is totally fine. Um, now what I can go through my code. So I start with my uh, server code first. I try try to just uh, go to the important stuff. So what I do here is I, this is that I creating my my log file, which will be written into. Now uh, I'm creating my world that uh, my sockets will be working in. This is my vector of a threads. So these are the server threads, basically port threads that uh, each port has a different thread and each port thread has multiple threads inside of that thread. So I create all, I start all, all, my, all my port threads, so I'm going down. Um, uh, I create a listening socket and a client socket. So listening socket I is the server socket that uh, the port listens on. Then I uh, bind the socket um, and I uh, listen on socket. So now I go and accept the connections after I'm listening. Um, this is the code. If you want to put that your server will accept more than 40 clients, you just chan change this number. But because I have five ports, it has to be multiple of five that it shuts down properly. Um, uh, and also the clients will be just receiving that uh, there was no no received messages or anything. So if you if you want to test it for more, I can go up to a hundred. That shouldn't take too much. And I start my my server again. Go to my client and I have uh, clients as well as hundred, so this should actually finish at the same time. And as you can see, it's just printing out every hundred milliseconds. Yeah, and nicely finished. So if I just enter this, the server is closed. And as you can see that I'm getting my uh, HTML uh, content back what I'm requesting. So, for example, uh, thread or my client thread, it's also a threaded program. The client's uh, 97, it's connecting on port 2000, then he was redirected to port 2003, and then it just prints the whole file, so HTTP, whatever he got back. So, HTTP was uh, 200 OK, and then the doc type is HTML, head, uh, title, uh, body as you can see is just a uh, simple web page there then uh, I put a one web page that is not found so the client is 98 and then is HTTP 404 not found so content text HTML and it's not found Lucas so I know that is the web page not found um, now I'm going back to my server So after I accept connection, uh, I create the thread for each connection on each port um, that is going to serve the client and then uh, I detach that thread so it's run on its own. Now I'm going to serve the client, so what I'm doing, if port is 2000, I put the client on different port, so I'm going to that uh, function and I take the port in. So what I'm going to do here is just receive whatever client sends, it doesn't matter. Then I'm going to uh, take a port, put it into string, so characters, because I'm sending buffer of characters, and I send the s socket, sorry, the port that he should reconnect first. And my client is also optimized, uh, f like custom built, so it first uh, waits for the port and then when it gets the port it goes to that port. Um, and then I uh, shut down and close the socket. Um, now that was the for the when the port is 2000. Now when the port is uh, the different than 2000, I'm going to give them resources. As you can see that the timestamp and everything is here. This is the printing client port and IP and putting it also into log file. This is the getting client resource. So if I'm going to get the client resource, 
as you can see I need a file path so I'm going to process the request process the buffer so if I go down to process the request that is just taking my first uh, first line uh, I'm taking the get something then it goes and get file path so I created my own rejects that parse that for the um, the file path so I'm uh, getting the middle of my rejects uh, I'm going down and I'm returning the extracted submatch so it's the whatever file name I'm getting I want to get if it's web page one then it returns web page one if it's web page two it returns web page two um, if it doesn't matches it just returns empty string um, then I'm going to go back to my code um, so I'm going to get the client resource what he wants and then I open the file with the file pad that I just took out and uh, and the send send the file to the to the client so uh, if I open the file I'm going to send it if I don't then I just send 404 that file was not found and what I do in a send file I create a status line content line as, as it was in HTTP request uh, put it all into one buffer the entire file first I scan it put it into my buffer then I mem copy all three buffers together and send it to the client and then I print how many uh, bytes was sent um, now after I create after I process the after I get the client resource I'm going to print the timestamp and also put it into the log file that the timestamp and uh, also how much it took for this function to be processed for these two functions basically to be processed um, and then after that is all done so after I uh, serve how many clients I want the server is going to shut down and uh, just file closes and I clean up the world that I was working in this scene just I'm waiting for enter that the console window stays there open and now I'm going to show you my client real fast and uh, this is just a simple client again I create my world create my client threads so I create each different different thread for each client um, I create a socket in a client that socket is going to connect uh, to the uh, IP of a server and a port now um, I'm going to send first what I want so I select one of the web pages in into the send buffer and I put it into the string so if I go here this is just a simple if and else if statement that I'm just uh, going one by one so I'm selecting different web page um, and then I send that buffer to the server now if if is here if my um, Now here, if my received file dot size is equals four, so I know that uh, there is uh, four characters, so it's two thousand and one, so it's only four characters. I need to reconnect because it sent me back the port. So I'm going and I create another thread with the uh, the received file, so it's the port and a client number. So it's just calling itself again. It's calling this function again and going back but it's already reconnected so then I'm, I'm going to print out the whole received file so it's just a simple if statement if it's if it's send the, if the if the the thing I received was a port it just reconnects if not then I just get the whole file and print it out so that was my client now I'm supposed to talk little bit about uh, the limitations of using ground robin and uh, 
alternative approach that would suit the example application. 